Man, if you have bills due next week, then library music's probably not going to help you pay for that. But if you want to pay your bills three years from now, then library music might be the way to go for you. We're going to talk about royalties, how long it takes to get paid, as well as checking out a brand new electro tension cue on this week's vlog. What is happening, YouTube? This is Dave Croft. Welcome back. And if this is your first time, welcome aboard. This is my week 13 check-in every week of 2021. I'm writing at least one cue, and I am talking about it here on my YouTube channel. And so uh, if this is your first time, welcome, welcome, welcome. So happy to have you with us today. I'm going to be talking about that cue we were just uh, listening to. It's called Racing for Pinks. It is uh, an electro tension cue for an upcoming uh, an upcoming show. It's an interesting project. It's a custom cue, but it's not scored to picture. It's a custom album. So the production company uh, gave us very specific references and a lot of uh, a lot of details of what to write, uh, but um, it's not scored to picture. So so that's it's a custom album, and we're going to be talking that about that cue. It's called Racing for Pinks, but uh, it's the end of uh, it's the end of quarter one, and so royalty statements are coming out. And I thought it would be a good time to talk about royalties, kind of how they all work, in case you're not familiar with it, and how long it really takes to get paid. And royalties are something that seems kind of mysterious if you, if you don't really kind of understand how it works. In the library world, we don't necessarily, us library music composers, don't make a lot of money on the front end, meaning we don't get paid up front for the music. Library wants some cues, we give them some cues, and uh, it's rare that you get up, up front money. Now, it's possible. It it has it does happen, but it's not like an advance on a book deal or or you know with a custom scoring gig you would get you know a big lump sum and then you would pay for your production and as well as yourself through all of that. But with library music, we we really or rarely get much upfront money, if at all. I know for my sports broadcasting stuff, there is zero upfront money, and for some of the other library stuff, it might be, you know, a, a couple of hundred or, or something like that up front, which means that the the majority of our income as a library music composers comes on the back end or the royalty side of things. Now, royalties start with you being registered with a PRO, a performing rights organization. In the U.S., that's going to be ASCAP, BMI, or CSAC. I started out with ASCAP, really love the folks over there, and I was really glad to have started on ASCAP because they have so many resources for uh, for young composers, for new composers. Just uh, they have workshops and, and, and competitions, and their their website is really really stellar, and just lot lots of lots of resources. But as my career pro progressed, then I moved over to CSAC. I have I don't have any experience with BMI, but I know uh, several composers who are very happy with BMI, and so I'm not here to tell you what which one to choose. I started out with ASCAP, very happy to have started out with ASCAP, moved over to CSAC because that was what was going to work better for my catalog and the types of placements that I was getting. Now, how it works is when when a, a piece of music makes air, right, then that gets logged in the production company, whether it's a, li a live broadcast, like with sports stuff, or whether it's uh, scripted or unscripted TV, you know, episodic TV. When it, when it, makes air, then that gets logged in a cue sheet, and that cue sheet gets uh, tabulated and um, collected and then all sent off to the performing rights organization. And so the submission of the cue sheet could happen during the production, or it could take several months. I know with uh, sports stuff, because it's so fast-paced, I might not see a cue sheet show up in my PRO until two or three months after the episode aired, after the show aired, so um, or after that game aired or whatever. And so that alone takes a couple of months for the cue sheet to show up. And then it gets put into, once all the cue sheets show up at the PRO, then the PRO 
pushes the uh, the numbers through their algorithm, and each PRO has their own algorithm, and they're they're somewhat of trade secrets, and there's some there's some there's some algorithmic kind of uh, of uh, voodoo, I guess, that goes on. I'm not. I don't mean that pejoratively. It's just that uh, that I I don't know of any composer who knows what the exact formula is. But I know that ratings of a show, length of play, and type of play all kind of get factored in. So if you make air. Uh, if you make air on, on this show, then this PRO is going to pay one. If you make air on with the same show, a different PRO might pay differently because they might put different weights on whether it was more higher rated or whether uh, the length of play and, and all of that. So there's a lot of number crunching that goes in, but you, every single time you make air, it gets logged into a Q sheet and the PROs tabulate all of that. And then once a quarter, they will pay you. Now, with with sports broadcasting, uh, the networks pay money to the PROs so that they can use music in their catalogs for the live broadcast. Now, things that are not live, typically those need to be cleared ahead of time meaning that they have to secure the rights for those. So anytime you see like a feature story during a sports broadcast where they've they've pre-recorded interviews, you know, and sit-downs and that kind of thing, or if it's it's a television show and they've used music, then they have pre-arranged and pre-cleared the the music ahead of time. Not pre-arranged meaning they they've made arrangements with a library company or if it's a, it's a song then the artist or whatever. But even still, that all takes a lot of time. The cue sheet process, the submitting the cue sheet process, the, just the, the cataloging and then crunching the numbers. So in general, it can take anywhere from six to nine to 12 months to receive payment for airplay that you've received. That's why I say that if you have bills due next week, then cranking out library music's not not the way to pay for that. Unless you cranked out library music a year ago or two or three years ago, because sometimes it can take several years for the cue sheet system and everything. And, and what if there's an error and and all of that has to has to be ironed out. And that just takes time. Especially when you when you consider how much television gets made, how much music and television gets made. Like just looking at a cue sheet for one three-hour golf broadcast, you know, you might have 50 cues. Of course, different uh, different networks use music differently. Different types of sports use music differently. I'd say 50 cues, but in golf, that might be a little, that might be much. I know in football, they'll use they'll use more. Than golf, but take a look at your your typical uh, reality type TV show, some a docudrama on Discovery Channel or whatever. They might have 35, 40, 50. I've seen as many as 85 different music cues used in one one hour episode of TV. And it's not even really an hour; it's really more like 43 or 45 minutes. Sometimes you'll have cues on top of cues. They'll use they'll use the uh, the no melody stem from here, the drone stem and the rhythm stem, and they're all in the same key. And they'll uh, anyway, that's another topic. But it takes a while to get paid, and that can be really frustrating, especially if you're on the front end of your career, because you're 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 making all of this effort, you're putting all of this time into writing, and you're really really going for it, and you are not seeing immediate results. A lot of time you're not seeing immediate results because you're not getting air right away because it takes time for your music to get into the system. So let's 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 factor that into it. You write a cue. If I write a cue today, like Racing for Pinks that we're going to be talking about here in a minute, that was recorded and I sent out the, the final masters last night. So Sunday night, I'm sending out the final masters to the publisher. And that has to go up to the library 
And then that has to sift through the system. It has to get to all the video editors. It's got to get into playlists and it's got to get into their, into their, into their ears so they can say, Hey, I, I like this and I want to use it. So a cue I wrote uh, today is uh, April 5th. So a cue that I wrote on April 4th might not actually get air un- for another six months from now. Because if it's being produced now, then it's going to take at least several weeks to actually get on the air. And it really depends on where you are in production. I know these uh, this show hasn't aired yet, so it's still in production. And so you're looking at, you know, six months from right there. And then it gets air, and then you're into the cue sheet royalty back end kind of thing. So that can be really frustrating on the, on the front end, waiting to get air, then waiting to get paid, and then getting hit with the reality of, of how much can you actually make in this gig. It varies wildly. And uh, I'm not here to tell you like specific numbers, different placements, different libraries, different PROs. There are tons of variables which can and will affect this. But my napkin math says you can expect anywhere between $75 and $200 per minute of air. Thing is, is we really don't often make a full minute. You might get 15 seconds. And even even 70, you know, as I say that, 75 might be pretty generous. Uh, making, get, getting some air during, um, during like a, a playoff game, the AFC championship or you know, Super Bowl or something like that. That's, that's when you're making two and $300 per minute. I know with the AFC championship, I was uh, $283 for a minute of music. Now, I, when I first, when I first started seeing my, my royalty checks come in, that, that felt kind of low, if I'm being honest, right? It didn't, didn't feel like a bunch. But this industry and library music, it's really a, a quantity number. And, I, and, and we're going to talk about quality versus quantity. That's, that's coming up on a blog topic, I promise. And, and I don't want to get into that here. But it really is a, a, a numbers game. You want to have a, a bunch of music out there all getting you these little tiny, these little tiny hits. So if you're making $50 here, $75 here, even like with streaming, with streaming services, you might get like $4, (laughs) but it all adds up. And that's the whole point. And that's why you need a lot of music out there. And that's why you you need to have a, a lot of relationships with different libraries and try to get into as many shows as possible. Because You're not looking for for a hit. You're not looking for one cue to just kind of elevate your career. Now, if that happens, good. Take it, run with it, count yourself blessed. I've I've definitely heard of library composers who have these evergreen tracks that just keep on giving. But for most of us, it's it's a lot of little tiny placements on shows that, that aren't seen by, you know, 45 million people. And it's about having as many irons in the fire as possible because all of the little royalties add up over time. And that, that's really what we're going for here. So if you have rent due next week, then, then library music isn't the way to do it. But if you want to pay your bills in the long term, if you're ready to really settle into to uh, the long game, then library music can absolutely get you there. But you need to bank on on a couple of years. And, I, uh, and I, I'm here to encourage you to stick with it. Stick with it when it feels like you're not getting any air. Stick with it when you, you've, you've, pour, you've, you've given up vacation days, you're, you're, you're spending less time with your family or your, your pets, you know, because you're really going for it. But just just hang in there. If you're writing good music, if you're and if you're 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 being easy to work with, if uh, if you check your ego at the door, 
and you are really, really pouring yourself into your music and making making an honest, earnest go out of this, then 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 I believe it's going to work out for you. Just give it some time and be prepared to give it some time. What do you think? How was how was uh, if you're a library music composer? How has your experience been? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. So with that, let's look at this week's cue. It's called Racing for Pinks. And like I said, it was a, it was a cue written for an upcoming, uh, it's, it's a, like a, like a, or I think, it, I think, I don't really know. I think it's kind of like a, a, a racing documentary kind of thing. Drive, I know there's cars and drivers and that kind of thing. So the, the references that we got were Sicario, Tenet, some Mr. Robot stuff, and uh, and so I, I with this cue I leaned into some Fast and Furious type of a vibe, and so with that let's take a listen to it and then we'll talk about it on the other side. So that was racing for pinks, uh, as in racing for pink slips, which is, I think, something that that like street racers say, I guess. All right, so uh, absolutely going for that kind of Fast and Furious vibe here, and uh, pretty simple form. It's just a little little bit of an intro, build, bringing in some drums, a little bit of a breakdown, and then take it home with some all important editable moments with a drop and those kind of things. So uh, we start off uh, with my, uh, my my rhythmic layer. These are all these uh, these pulses. There's a, and this is some Omnisphere stuff here. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, I, I'm wrong. Well, I'm coming back. I'll come back to that here at the end. All right, so we've got some Omnisphere between these two. Still going on with some call and response action where I'll have one play and then for, for a couple of bars and then uh, the other sound for a couple of bars. I, I try to avoid layering these types of sounds as much as possible because it can just get, you know, you have one going gong gong, go dong gong gong, and the other one going chicka buka 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 buka, and it can just, this can just sound really kind of clunky. So uh, I, I tend to do alternating. Uh, alternating ideas uh, with that, even though I have one right there. All right, then into my breakdown. And then we get into some silent. By the way, this cue was written during last week's live stream, our music production live stream. Every Thursday, I do uh, a, an exclusive live stream for my Patreon patrons. And, uh, and yeah, so if that's just something, if you want to see these kind of cues get written, and, and we're actually writing all different types of cues from happy clappy to attention uh, to Americana and, and who knows what's next. But, uh, but yeah, you can join me over the live stream uh, by becoming a patron. So, uh, th so this is Silent. I really like Silent. It's, it's really good and I think kind of underrated. Thank you. 
So just just a really simple little little synth arpeggiator and some really good presets as well. I think I think uh, like Omnisphere and Zebra. I think those kind of dominate the conversation when it comes to synths. But Silence is just just doing its thing, man. It's just really really doing its doing its thing. All right, then I have my my sustained layers going on here. I've got another uh, Omnisphere uh, Atmo pad. This atmospheric kind of playable textures with these these moans, uh, dis these distorted moans, just nice and nice and really dark. I got some Pandora orchestra swells here from uh, Symphobia Four Pandora. Just work really really well. Just sprinkling in a little bit of orchestral textures in there. And then the uh, sustain sounds really come out during the breakdown, this breakdown middle section where I just kind of smooth out the energy and uh, basically pulling energy back before I'm gonna, gonna hit, hit the listener in the face with my final section. So I have this kind of Omnisphere, this bowed synth and another Pandora, Symphobia 4 Pandora sound. It's kind of a really creepy kind of horns and then uh, give the rhythm. Uh, well, now we're getting into our bass sounds. I'll come back to that. Uh, but here is uh, the breakdown with all of all of our sustained sounds. This orchestra swells hitting into, into that section. It's really important when you're going in and out of these different song sections, whether you're introducing the, the main hook or, or in this case I'm introducing uh, right here, this orchestra swell is helping to to ramp the energy into bringing the, the drums in. This is when all of the the, the, the the main percussion hits. I mean, it's kind of sprinkled in earlier, but it really hits right here. And you really, you can't go from like no drums to drums without some sort of kind of on-ramp, right? If we're thinking about if we're thinking about this as a journey, right? And and we're, we're starting in our car and we're sitting there. So at the beginning of this, we're just kind of sitting in our car and we turn on the key, we turn on the ignition, right? So that's us turning on the ignition and you know, we're kind of, we're backing out of the driveway and then we're kind of driving through our neighborhood here. All right? And now we're starting to drive through the city and now we're about to uh, we're about to to hit the highway. So we need a little on ramp, right? So these little like this orchestra swell. There's a little bass swell right here and reverse crash and cymbals. This is all material that helps on ramp the energy. helps helps us really 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 drive there. Okay, so my next uh, batch of sounds are going to be all of my bass sounds, all of my low end sounds. So starting with an Omnisphere low end, ba low end bass, and then this bowed synth, which is has kind of these overtones, and then some 808s. During the live stream, I used Sublab for this, but uh, but these are more of I, I ended up replacing them. Sorry, sorry for you live stream folks. I ended up replacing them in the final mix. Uh, just ah, just. I don't know, Sublab doesn't have the oomph. And so what I have here are uh, 808 one-shots that I loaded in, and these are one-shots from Splice. There's a big conversation going going on right now in Dan Graham's uh, Facebook group. Uh, I think uh, Guide to, to Music for uh, Library, Composition for Library Music, I think is the name of the group. I'll, I'll try to have a link to that. I'll make a note of that. Uh, I'll, I'll make a, I'll put uh, put a, a link to that. There's a huge discussion going on right now about splice and loops and everything. And uh, you can check out my uh, my video on uh, sh can you use the loops and when you should use the loops. But uh, but splice is is for one shots and everything and, and like little percussion toppers. I think I think you're very safe to use splice. Uh, do check with your publisher first though, if, if you're, if you're worried about it. And so I've loaded in uh, a series of one shots, 808 one shots into an alchemy patch, just to kind of make my own little sample library, sampler library here. And so uh, that's what I got going on and I can switch these up. So if I wanted this 808 instead, 
if I wanted this 808, if I wanted that guy. But I ended up using that. I, and the reason is because with Sublab, and the reason I switched is with Sublab, it's, it's a good plugin, but there's not enough oomph. Like you have to do more processing. Uh, but if I bring in, if I bring in a, uh, a one shot, then it has all that processing kind of baked into the one shot. So I find myself having to do less to the sound if I'm bringing in these one shots because they're, they're usually mastered and they have effects and filter and everything is already kind of baked in. But if I'm bringing my own plugin using Sublab, then then it's just I, I've got to add more to it. And so if I'm looking to 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 not cut corners, but if I'm looking for the quickest way there, quickest way to, to the end of the queue and, and being able to submit final stems and masters, then um, not not burning an hour or 30 minutes even, you know, dialing in my 808 sounds, that really adds up over, over hundreds of cues. So uh, my bass sounds here, and I've got this cool, interesting, this is another silence sound, just really opening up. And by the way, this uh, Bode's, Bode's symbol or this Bode synth is the same Bode synth as up here. It has a nice kind of overtones that are being added to it. Uh, just an octave down. A little bit pitch bending. Then I bring in this kind of transformery thing right here at the end. Yeah. And that's, uh, that's I think it's just me just just hitting it. I mean, and then opening up the filter. So instead of, I mean, instead of getting in and uh, and like programming a gate and all of that, just 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 play it, just play it, and I uh, have a lot more control over it. I think I think sometimes we can kind of overthink it. We're like, oh, we need to add all these process. No, just, just, just play it. Just, just play it. I do that with some like snare delays and that kind of thing. If I, I could, I could sit there and try to dial it all in, or if I could just go and just play it lighter and make it sound like a delay. It's kind of like faking, faking a delay. So, um, checking out my percussion, lots of percussion layers here. I'm going to uh, zip to the end and, uh, it's first starting with, uh, well in our breakdown section, We've got this pitched kick kind of thing happening. Another omnisphere patch. It's 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 pitched, but it's it's a kick, nonetheless. This is some uh, pulverized drums from. I think this is damage. No, no, I'm sorry. This is studio drummer uh, that I've I've run through and threw on some Reason Pulverizer. Just really just gross, kind of Travis Barkery sounding, unapologetically distorted. On top of a, uh, a, a, a dubstepy type of a snare sound. Yeesh. And then some Drum Lab. Just really just dirty, gnarly, uh, add all those together. Got some some percussion arpeggiators going on there, and then some hat layers. Piotti on the downbeat. I just like I just like I just like Piotti those those, uh, those orchestral crashes. A little reverse crash to help set it up with some cymbal effects. Which is just bowed cymbal. And then finally a riser. Play that riser by itself. I believe this is a rise and hit. Yeah, it's Rise and Hit, which is a plugin by uh, Native Instruments, and it's a little processor in intensive. And so, whenever I'm uh, whenever I'm done with it and it's placed, then I usually render it to audio so that uh, I don't have to, to to chew up a plugin using it. So, uh, coming out of my breakdown, 
you're really kind of pulling the energy back. And then a little six, four bar. One, two, three, four, five, six, boom. So you basically have a four bar hit and a float and then a two beat pickup. One, two, and come in nice and strong. And, and that's, that's the edit point for uh, an, uh, the editor so that they can go in, come out, they can add a little quippy dialogue kind of moment there, whatever, whatever, however they're gonna use it. So yeah, that is Racing for Pinks, and I hope that was uh, hope that was cool to watch. Hope you enjoyed that. I really appreciate you guys hanging out with me on a Monday morning. And once again, if you are just starting your journey in library music and you're not seeing the royalties or the placements, I just really encourage you to hang in there. Hang in there. You, I, I, th I think you'll get there. I think you'll get there. And if you're watching this channel, then uh, hopefully you've already kind of committed to maybe bettering yourself or wanting to learn more about the industry. If you ever have any questions or comments, uh, you can let me know below. You can join our 52Qs Facebook group. We have a pretty active community over there. We're trying to pick a name for our community right now. I think the winner of the poll is the QTs or the Q-tips. We'll see, we'll see how that goes. Uh, as always, I, a huge thanks to my patrons who give me their actual real life money to help support the channel. And as a reminder, every week I do a patron only live stream. So if you wanted to see how a track like this gets made from scratch, and I mean from scratch, we open the DAW, and we start writing. Oftentimes, these uh, these get carried over into the following the following week. And if that's something that's interesting interesting to you, then uh, you can join us over on Patreon. But I really appreciate you guys hanging out with me on a Monday, and I will see you next week for week fourteen. Until next time, peace. <laughs>